All right, welcome to Master Space BU Tutorials. We are still journeying through the course trigonometry. Now, under this video, we are going to learn how to use the fundamental identities to simplify and solve some equation, sorry, some trig functions. Very good. But before that, I would like us to first look at negative angles identity. Negative angles identity. Now I hope you have I hope you can recall all that you have learned from the other section. Alright, very good. We will learn more on the trigonometric identities and also the negative angles identities. So let's start from the negative angles identity. Very good. So let's assume that we have our O Y O S plane. Now good. So we have our O Y and O X perpendicular plane. We know that with this, when the angle formed, that's from right here in algebra 1, the angle that will be formed here is the one that is making on the S axis. And it's going to give you S Y. S Y. That is the point S Y. But when it form here, when it form here, when the angle form here, the right angle triangle also will mix with the x axis. All right, here this is the y, and that is the x. Here this is the y, and that is the x. And for this one also, the point that is going to form here is going to the x is going to be positive here. The, Y will be negative because when you have your OS and OY plane, we, we locate the positive values of S here and the negative values of S here and the positive values of Y here and the positive values of and the positive negative values of Y here. Very good. So for that matter, here we are going to get S negative Y. And that is what that is going to give you the very good. Now, what about if the angle is forming here? If the angle forms here, it will also mix with the x as this is the y and this is the x. Alright. So we are bringing our knowledge or concept in the point that is going to form. And you can see that here since the negative x will be here and your positive y will be here you are going to get negative x y for that part very good and what again what about the one that will be forming now you know it cannot mix with the y axis no it always mix with the x axis and with this one also we are going to get negative x then we are going to up here we also know that here is for the negative y. So that is going to be negative y. So negative x and the negative y. So that is how we locate the point on the O X Y plane. Alright. So having this we can even draw a circle on it like that. <laughs> Very good. So that is how it's going to look like. Now, from this diagram, from this diagram, from this diagram, you can see that the angle, the angle, that is the angle theta, having the point of x, y. And you can see that there is the point of the angle theta having the point of x, y on its terminal side. And this is the This is the terminal 
and in the initia. We have learned that from the terminal and the initia. Alright. Very good. Having a point on the S1. On each terminal side has a corresponding angle of negative theta. Has a corresponding angle of negative theta with point of SY on each terminal side. So if the angle here is positive, we are saying that the angle here is also going to be negative theta. That is anti-clockwise and the clockwise direction. That's what we are talking about here. Very good. Now, from the definition of sign, from the definition of sign, we can say that sine negative theta, sine negative theta is going to give us negative. We know already that sine is an odd function, all right? So when the argument is negative, the result, the output is going to give you a negative. So that is y over r. That is for sine. And, and we know that sine theta 2 will be equal to y over r. y over r. So, so it means that sine of negative theta and sine theta, sine and negative theta and, and sine theta are negative of each other, are negative of each other. Or, or you can also say that sine of negative theta is equal to sine, negative sine theta. Alright, so that's what that means there. That's what that means there. Very good. Now, we know that this is the first quadrant, this is the second quadrant, this is the third quadrant, and this is the fourth quadrant. And we normally use something like all, I hope you haven't forgotten it, all students take calculus. All students, all students take calculus. All students take calculus. Alright, so from the figure the quadrant one and the quadrant two shows an angle of what a positive that is shows an angle theta in the quadrant. <coughs> Sorry. We can see that quadrant one and quadrant two shows an angle theta in quadrant two. In quadrant two. But, but the same result holds for theta in any quadrant, in any quadrant, in any quadrant. Also, we can also investigate on cosine also. This is the, this is for sine. Let's look at that of cosine. Now, we will be using the idea of alternative calculus later on. Very good. So, for cosine, if you have, you know that that is, a cosine is an even function, right? And since it's an even function, if the argument is negative, the output is going to give you a positive result. Unlike, unlike sine function, right? Very good. And this is going to give you S over R. S over R. Therefore, therefore, cos negative theta is going to give you cos theta. Unlike sine, which is going to give you negative theta. Very good. Very good. Now, there are some things that you need to also take note of it very well. Okay? And that is NB. Right, NB. Use all right. 
So, now that and B. Now, need to take note that we can use the identities for sine negative theta and cos negative theta, right? To find to find cos negative theta to find cos negative theta and also tan negative theta. We can do that because we know that tan negative theta is going to be sine negative theta over that is over cos because we know that this is that, that. So we are using that in case it is negative. Alright. Very good. And this is going to give you something interesting. Now what? You can see that with this, with this, you are going to get negative sine theta. And for that one year, since it's cosine, that is an even function, so it's going to give you cos theta. Get cos theta, it's going to be positive cos theta, but this will give you negative sine theta. So, since we have negative here and a negative here, it doesn't mean that it will cancel out to give you a positive result. No. So, we can now conclude that, wow. The negative theta to give you negative tan theta. How do I see that? We cannot conclude that the negative theta will also give you a negative tan theta. So we can also say that tan is also an odd function. Tan is also an odd function. Interesting. Now this group, this group of identities, this group of identities is what is known as the negative angle or negative number identity. Negative number identity. So these groups of identity that we call negative angle identity. Now, since we are done with that, let's move on to the recipe. Procar, the quotient, the Pythagorean, and the negative angle identities. To so, generalize it under the fundamental identity. So, all that we are saying is that the idea of Reciprocal identity, quotient identity, Pythagorean identity, and negative angle identity are all classified under fundamental identities. Under fundamental identities. So let's look at the first one, and that is reciprocal identity. Reciprocal identity. Now, let's go for the reciprocal identities. Now, we have three reciprocal identity, and one is sec second. We have that for second. We have that for tangent. I said tangent. Cotagen. And last we have that for cosecant. Cosecant value. So when we pick sec, when we pick sec, sec theta is going to give you 1 over cos theta. And when we pick cos, theta will be giving us 1 over tan 
Twitter. So you can see it's a reciprocal identity. In the last one, you can get set, which is one over of theta value. And that is what oh cosec cosec that cosec cosec and that will be one over sine. So we have s between it. So one over sine theta value. So that is for your reciprocal identities. Second, secondly, let's go for the Pythagorean identity. Let's go for the Pythagorean All right. That is the Pythagorean identity. For Pythagorean identities, we can take it from this angle. Or we can take it from this concept that we have that is the n, that is the y, and that will be the radius r value. And we know that r square is equal to x square plus y square. Okay, so the first thing that, so this is the by different identity. So the first thing that we are going to do is that we are going to divide, to get a first identity, we divide each term by r squared, not only r, but r squared. So, r squared over r squared is equal to s squared over r squared plus y squared over r squared. And this gives one is equal to, this is going to give us, now with this, you can write it as s over r r squared plus y over r all square. But before that, don't forget that sine theta is equal to y over r. We have an entire that already. And tan theta is y over s. Very good. So by substitution, by substitution, we can get our first Pythagorean identity. We can get our first Pythagorean identity, and that is one is equal to s over r is cos. So we get cos squared theta plus y over r is sine. So we get sine squared theta. So this is our first Pythagorean identity. Then we move on to the second Pythagorean identity, and that is we are using the same thing, but in this case, we are going to divide each term by s squared. So we divide here by s squared. So this is going to give us one plus. And this will give us y over s squared. R over s all squared. One plus. So what is y over s? And that is tan squared s plus r over s. That is the reciprocal of. So you can see that this is s over r and s over r is cos theta so for it to be r over s that is going to be set the reciprocal of cos 
sets play theta. So this becomes the sorry. So that is the second Pythagorean identity. So for us to get for us to get the third Pythagorean identity first. We got the first one by dividing both by r squared. Now, dividing by s squared to get the second one. So, to get the third one, let's divide by y squared. So, this gives us s over y r squared plus 1 equal to r over y r squared. So s over y will be, now you can see that, tan theta is equal to y over s. So the reciprocal of it will be s over y. And that is going to be cos. And that is going to be cos. So this will be cos squared theta plus 1 which is equal to this is r over y that two is L, the reciprocal of sine and that is sec r over y r over y and that is going to be sorry cosec 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 square theta very good so this is our This is our third reciprocal identity. Sorry, by the way, I think. So now, finally, for reciprocal identity, for reciprocal, sorry, for Pythagorean identity, we have three Pythagorean identity. And one is, one is, What is the first one? Okay, so this is the first one, the second one, and the third one. Very good. Now, I forgot to... Okay, let's go for that. So the first one is reciprocal identity. The second one is Pythagorean identity. Let's go for quotient identity. You know that quotient means that Two functions being divided, right? And looking at what we have here. We should have looked at this before the Pythagorean, but no problem. The quotient identity. Now watch. We know that tan theta is equal to y over s. We know that tan theta is equal to y over s. Alright? Very good. Very good. Okay. Very good. Now, we also know that we also know that sin theta, sin theta is going to be y over r. So we can make y the subject and we are going to get r sin theta. And for cos theta to be equal to x over r, we can make x the subject and get r cos theta. Very good. So by substitution, by substitution, we are going to get our quotient identity and that is going to be tan theta. Now the y here is r sin theta and of course here s here is r cos theta. So the r cancels the r. Therefore we get tan theta to be equal to sin theta over cos theta. And that is the reciprocal identity. Very good.
and that is how we get the reciprocal identity. Now, which identity left? The identity left is negative angle identity. In fact, you have that one already, but let me write that for you quick. Alright, so that's the last one, the negative angle identity. And that is what we have. And now you can, you can see that sine is an odd function, so the output is always negative. And the cosine is even function. So the expression, that is the term, the cosine, the set, and the cos. The one that we are going to, we are going to have sine inside is going to give you an odd function. So you can see that you know that tan is sine over cos, so the result is always negative. This one is one over sine, so the result will always be negative. Sec is one over cos, so the result will be positive. Cos is sine uh, co cos over I forgot to give that one. Cos theta is equal to cos theta over sine theta. Because we know that because we know that tan theta is Sine over cos, and since it, the reciprocal identity for tan is cos, that is going to give you instead of sine over cos, it's going to cos over sine. So that's the cos. Cos. Okay. So since we have sine, this we are going to get it to be an odd function. All right. So that is all the fundamental identities. So when we talk about fundamental identity. It's just simple, the reciprocal identity, the Gaussian identity, the particular identity, and the negative angle identity are all called fundamental identities. So, in our next, I would like to end this video. We are going to end this video, but let me change the topic to deriving deriving the Deriving the fundamental identity. So in our